what's up guys? Today we're gonna to be doing a first impressions of the new EF600, the Ananda Nano, and the new Aria Organic, which I'm extremely excited about. I'm actually pretty pumped about all of these products for one reason or another. Either they're super unique in the industry, like the EF600, or they come in at a good price point, like the Nano and the Organic, for what they can do. So that should be a little bit of a sort of heads up on what to expect from this video. I will have full reviews of all these, and it's important to note that I'm using brand new headphones on a brand new DAC and amplifier, which is the EF600, of course. So testing and comparing against new equipment is gonna be one of the kind of things that I'm looking to do in the full review because I haven't used other headphones with this amplifier and I haven't used these headphones with other amplifiers. So that's what I'm gonna kind of be looking to do in the full review. So I wanna start off with the EF600. This thing is monolithic, I think would be the best term to describe it. It's actually quite big. It may not look that big next to me. Here's the new A70 Pro from Topping, for example. It's obviously quite big. Now the party trick for this particular amplifier is sort of twofold. One is it's a strange mixture of an amplifier where it's actually got an R2R Himalayan DAC inside of it. So it's a DAC and an amp, but most DAC amps don't really carry R2R DAC, so it's relatively an anomaly in the industry for that reason alone. But the second reason is that it doubles, of course, as a headphone stand. And it kind of needs to be tall because a lot of Heifman's headphones are quite tall, like this Aria Organic, and still has room for the cables. I think the general design is actually pretty great. I like this front finish, it looks very clean. Um, the plastic around the edge seems to be relatively high quality. One thing I did note right away is there's a lot of heat vents. There's heat vents all along the bottom and all along the top, and this thing actually does generate quite a bit of heat, more than I was anticipating. The buttons feel kinda cheap, I guess, and the volume knob is cool in theory, um, but that feels a little cheap as well, and it's a tiny bit loose actually. But the rest of it, you have uh, USB and coaxial inputs, you have Bluetooth inputs, you have RCA and XLR inputs. One thing I did want to notate, and I'll, I'll kind of have more impressions after I've used this for a bit, is they actually put the inputs for the DAC at the top, so that means your cables are always going to go all the way up here. I actually kind of wish that they had swapped this if they could have and put them lowered. That way they were less likely to be shown just looking at it from the side. Um, and then of course you also see your XLR and RCA outputs that you can have as well to a different amplifier. Overall listening impressions so far, it's really hard to know what exactly is the headphone and what exactly is the amplifier. So I'm gonna wait for the listening impressions of the amp until I compare it against other amps to see what it can do and what it can't do. That thing is listed for $800 and pretty decent specifications for total harmonic distortion numbers and uh, signal to noise ratio. And I think it's got about five watts per channel. So. It's relatively powerful, relatively clean specs. I think compared to some of the like topping stuff, it's not gonna be as good. But again, it's got that cool party trick of not only being an all-in-one with an R2R DAC, but also it's got a headphone stand built into it. So I think it's gonna be for a specific customer and that customer may not necessarily care that it doesn't have the absolute pinnacle specs, even though the specs so far are pretty good. You guys know that I'm excited for the Aria Organic. It delivers. It's it's actually really, really good. Um, even just my brief listening impressions so far, it's been a pretty top notch. I think it's probably the best Aria so far. You guys already know I like the Aria lineup, so that should tell you kind of how this review is gonna go. So far, it's very, very good. The updates are kind of minimal. They're using a new kind of wood veneer thing on the outside here to give it this look. I think it's actually the best looking Aria as well. And I was really curious to find out what exactly the organic part of it was. And I think that they're referring to the sound quality. Um, the actual website doesn't really mention anything specifically organic about it. And I don't think they're using real wood, so I don't think there's really an argument there. So I think that it's in reference to the sound quality. What has changed from the Aria Stealth and even from the original Aria, the Aria Stealth started off by using uh, stealth magnets in the uh, planar magnetic design that they were using, which is just kind of like a, a rounded magnet version that Heifman thinks is more transparent. But this version now has not only the stealth magnets, but also the same diaphragm film that was on the HE-1000. So it's got, you know, kind of a combination of parts. And so far it's working out really well for this. Um, it's also the most efficient one coming down to 16 ohms, still at 94 dB for sensitivity, but it's quite efficient. And uh, coming in at the lowest price point of $1,300. I think that's the cheapest entry price of any Aria so far. So uh, for listening impressions so far, again, I wanna test on some other amplifiers, but it's quite good. I think they fixed a lot of the upper energy issues that they were having with vocalists. Um, there was a lot of extra energy, especially in the original one, where they would come across quite 
um, shouty, had a lot of gain in that area. This one fixes that and reduces those issues and makes them not even issues anymore. They're, in my opinion, resolved. And because of that, certain music is far more pleasing. The song um, Closure by Anne Brun is a great test for this sort of extra energy in a vocalist. Her vocalist can come across quite harsh and on previous arias this was an issue on this one it's great i think bass is also an improvement of the original aria but i think that the stealth was also very good at bass i'd really have to a b compare but both are very very good for bass they both seem transient i do remember the stealth being a little bit more solid but i think that this one is a little bit more like transparent and see-through and it still has a decent amount of thud to it a decent amount of slam to it but it feels like you can see through it more clearly. It actually feels higher fidelity, in my opinion, than what I remember the stealth being, though that's just memory. Regarding the organic sound signature, I actually do think that this is a very smooth, very natural sounding headphone overall. It's not technical sounding compared to some other Heifmans like the Nano, for example. But I do wanna test that specifically on other amplifiers, and I wanna bring up some more headphones and kind of A-B compare to really solidify my feelings on that. But so far, it sounds very natural, still really detailed, really good sound staging. That's one of the pleasant characteristics of Aria headphones is the sound staging capability is great. But I don't think it's as wide as the original one in terms of total width, but it fixes so many of the other issues that it's a compromise that I, I think I'm happy with. Okay, the Ananda Nano. Uh, 599 entry price, which is only $50 more than the existing Ananda. It's got a decent build to it. I'm not a huge fan of the extension mechanism here. I think it still kind of sucks. It's either too tight or too loose, depending on like just that specific side. It's always that way with this style build. This one actually comes with a carry case, which I can't remember if the Bluetooth did or not, but I don't think the original Ananda did. What makes this the nano version is of course the diaphragm that they're using. They're claiming it's got nanometer thickness and all that. But the listening impressions of this are actually extremely positive. Uh, this is a extraordinarily detailed headphone. Um, this again, similar to the original Ananda, is very much like a, a upgrade path to the Sundara. It's very detailed, very clean sound. Now this is still a little bit on the brighter end. Um, a lot of these lower end Heifmans are typically a little bit on the brighter end. This one's no exception to that. It's very detailed, yes, though it doesn't have some of the fatiguing characteristics that I tend to have issues with personally from some other headphones, such as the Moondrop Venus, for example. That's also a brighter headphone. This is not nearly as bright. Luckily, this one avoids S and T sibilance. It doesn't really have a harsh area there. That's one of the issues that I personally have is when a headphone is sibilant, it really causes me some headaches, but this one is pretty good. The punch from the bass is actually pretty fantastic, though the sub bass is not really competitive with something like that Aria. I actually think that the Aria sub bass is actually really, really solid. This has a little bit less obvious and less speedy uh, bass response um, compared to that Aria. And for the price difference, this is one of the things you can expect to hear. Um, sound staging is also wider on the Aria, of course, though it's pretty good on this. So compared to some other brighter headphones like the DT1990 Pro, the Meze 109 Pro, and the um, Moondrop Venus, I do think that this is a little bit less fatiguing than all of those uh, for me particularly. I don't know if everybody's going to be the same. It also sounds a little bit different compared to like the 1990 Pro. Uh, that has a very crystalline sound to it. It's very um, clear. It sounds extremely fast. And that headphone tends to lean a little bit more towards metallics, uh, kind of got a, a chimey sound to it. This is a little bit more natural sounding. It's not as metallic as that. I'd say it's more diverse in what it can sound like, um, but it doesn't quite have that super crystalline sound in the very top end like uh, the Venus does or like the 1990 Pro does. Mid-range, I'm not quite decided on whether or not I like it. I'm really gonna test on some other amplifiers like I have the Wu Audio WA7 and of course I have the A70 Pro that I'll be testing in the coming weeks. So I really wanna compare and contrast mid-range. Um, it's very different than the Aria. The Aria is very natural, very clean, very isolated. This is a little bit more forward and present than that, but I'm not sure if it's necessarily 
better yet. Um, so we'll see. To be honest, all of these so far are quite impressive. I think the EF600 is gonna be a relatively easy review. I think that people who know that they're interested in what it offers will like it. And people who want other things like better specifications or more power, for that price are probably gonna lean in other directions. So I kind of think that's how that one's gonna go, but we'll see. I really wanna compare and contrast before I say anything specifically yet. I am working on a number of other videos. I have an absolute ton of reviews that I need to catch up on because I've actually been away for about a month and a half now, um, even though I've been kind of steadily uploading since then. Um, but uh, yeah, so I've got a lot of other stuff cooking. One of the things I wanna cover and we'll be covering right after this video is the Odyssey Maxwell. So stay tuned for all that. Subscribe if you're not already. I, I'm really curious if we can hit 200,000 before the end of the year. That would be really awesome. So I'd appreciate you guys subscribing. Sharing the video would be great. I almost never asked for that stuff, but uh, I'd appreciate it if you did it. Thank you so much. See you guys next time. Bye.